Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Survivor Man Challenge. Where we left off, we have uh, we've cut down almost all of the forest. We've got our giant field plowed, so we gotta get all that moving. Um, we're down to just it's probably like two more laps of trees and then we're done. We are uh, we are in January. Um, I'm trying to remember real fast when it comes to the time of year. First, we'll check our sales. Nothing that we care about right now. Um, uh, trying to remember the exact time of year that it's the correct time for us to sell. It's either today or the next in-game day. Uh, so it's end of today is when the price is the highest, and then tomorrow it starts dropping. Which is a little bit of a guess. Because this starts at, I believe, midnight, which means by the time we start our day, it'll actually be down here. So I think what we do is I think we start by cutting stuff down today. And when we reach the end of the day, that'll be when we um, that'll be when we start loading up the pallets again. The moon. First of all, let's check, make sure everything's not backed up. Not that we have to worry too much there. So we've got one crate at that one, what the other? But um, we're not backed up a meaningful amount. There's only two more crates inside, so that's not gonna fill up by the end of today. That should give us a couple thousand more bucks. I don't actually expect that much more out of it, but some. Um, I do apologize if we end up having problems with the encoding. It is just a thing that happens with the way video compression works in places like Twitch and, you know, YouTube and whatnot. That, uh, that, you know, snow cover and that kind of stuff really just messes things up. Uh, for those who missed what this challenge is, pretty much we started with zero dollars, a chainsaw, and a dream, and we've been going from there. Uh, so far it's been going pretty good. We managed to get ourselves... A better tractor, we'd start out with a little 25 horsepower tractor, up to 100 power horsepower tractor. Um, we got ourselves two greenhouses, so that'll help out having some type of sustainable money. And we managed to get ourselves a plow that was not the smallest, but not much bigger than the smallest. Um, the big thing we've got going on right now that we're working on is generally speaking, I need to get the last little bit of these trees knocked down. The reason why I'm focusing on these is this is the last of our money we could get before spending more money. That um, the greenhouses will be a recurring sustainable income, but not a particularly generous one. So, I mean, it's, it's actually really good money for the effort involved, just to be clear. But, the greenhouse... Thank you. The greenhouses by themselves, you know... Those two greenhouses over the course of an entire year will probably make somewhere in the ballpark of, like, 20,000. Um, granted, we had one of those we've had for about half a year, I would guess-ish. Not quite. Um, and then the other one, we literally got it, like, an in-game month or two ago. Or an in-game day or two, whatever. It's the same thing. Um, so the problem is, it's not a lot of money very fast. Whereas we can sell these trees and in the course of a day I can get, you know, a good twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars um by the time we're gone. The problem is I've got what? Seven trees over there. We've got the two trees here. So I've got three more loads of trees, and then we're out of wood. So I will have to spend money on something if I want to increase our revenue. Now, the issue we have here is if I wanted to move into something like wheat or corn or you know soybeans like any any of those types of things uh the harvester for those runs about a hundred thousand between the harvester and the header the cheapest one so unless we get like really lucky on a sale which even a lucky one on the sale might not be enough um the things i would still need is i would need a cedar which runs i think it's close to thirty thousand we would need the Harvester, which on, on the best sale would still cost us somewhere in the area of 30000 as well. And then we need the Header, which is only like 25000 But the point of it is, all that's still going to end up coming down to, you know, like seventy, eighty thousand dollars 80000 And therein lies the problem. Um, with the sale of the stuff of the Greenhouse, and we get a pretty good return on it, which we may or may not, I might be able to get into the upper, probably 80,000s, but pretty much if I get a sale on anything less than, like, the harvester itself, then we can't, we can't actually harvest the crop on the other side, um, which greatly limits our options to effectively, one, 
we could go into grass, you know, grass, hay, that kind of thing. Um, it's a little late for that. I did already plow the field, so, you know, that's kind of already settled there. Um, or we could go into vegetable crops, so carrots, parsnips, that kind of thing. Um, the issue with the carrots and the parsnips and all that is the really cheap harvester is going to be really painful to deal with. Um, because basically you do... 0.8 meters worth of crop pickup per pass. And you have to buy it, you know, one crate at a time, fill up the crate, drop the crate, which does mean I'll have to circle back and pick up the crate with the forklift attachment on the tractor to then pile that onto our cart and drive it away, which is going to be exceedingly tedious, but would be viable. It also does mean we wouldn't be putting down fertilizer or lime or anything else because the cheapest machine for the lime is like 40,000. Um, fertilizer is a couple cheaper options, but they're not that cheap either. But that's just going to be the problem with the early game here, that I am going to be very heavily limited. But once I start getting some stable, uh, stable income, we'll be good. Um, another possibility that I hadn't really talked through before, but another possibility is instead going in the avenue of getting an animal. So something like sheep. So, for example, I believe, if I remember correctly, the sheep pen is, I want to say, $26,000. Um, so you get the sheep pen, get two sheep. And then with that, I could still get the, um, still get equipment for doing the grass. It does mean my giant field that I have plowed goes completely to waste for now. But, if I go that route, it means we'll get very little money from it in the short term. But we will watch the sheep population slowly climb in our sheep pen. Um, we will get wool. And that does mean we could eventually go into the process of making the wool into fabric and then the fabric into clothes and that could actually be extremely lucrative as well generally speaking your money in this game is the processes you know take take thing x that you make money with put into building y to produce thing that's worth more because each step ends up being usually somewhere in the ballpark of like one and a half to two times the value from input to output you know that's assuming selling at peak uh, so that could be really big. That'd be a little bit more satisfying than going just for grass. So that might be the route we go. Mostly just because I'm down to do, like, the... The parsnips and carrots and all that once we get the better harvesters, where I actually have, like, their own internal storage. You can pull up a vehicle and... You know, it functions kind of like the rest of the crops you all know in the game. But the crate by crate... The size I made that field is going to be completely undoable from a pragmatic standpoint. One thing I do look forward to is not doing this lap back and forth, like, six in, six times an endgame day and all that. Um, I'm going to be pretty happy to have the trees all cut down and be done with that part. I enjoy the uh, the tree stuff, but um, it does get repetitive when it's just that. So, like, I actually really enjoy the Silver Run map. It's one of the other runs I've debated recording to... The post up on the channel is to do a run of Silver Run that, you know, give ourselves a tile, um, 
And probably similar to this, like give ourselves a tile, give ourselves just enough that I can kind of haul the logs away. And then slowly convert the tile into actual farmland. The only snags I have with doing that style of run is one, unlike this one where money is a real challenge, the silver run map when you're talking about cutting down trees, unless you give yourself like a ridiculously tiny property, um, money is not going to be an issue. Not, not a real level. Yeah, I might not be able to buy the best tool at any given moment. But, you know, trees are very lucrative. As you can tell, we had just this one spot of trees and, you know, between the tractor and the greenhouses and all the other things we've bought, we've made over 100,000. Like, very, very well over 100,000. Oh. And this is just with, like, one little patch of trees on this map. Versus if you go to some place like Silver Run where the whole thing is forest. You know, when you start lumberjacking to make room for the farmland. You're just printing money. And even more so, if you get a sawmill in there. Like, it just, you know, compounds that so much. Which, of course, you're going to get the sawmill in there. Because even, even if it wasn't for the fact of that, it just adds more interest versus just cutting down trees. Now, the only counter to that is they do make the equipment for doing the wood, um, like actually handling these in an elegant manner. They do make it cost prohibitive. Like a lot of those machines end up costing half a million dollars and all that. But still, considering just how much money you make with the trees. The other concern with Silver Run is just... Every, every one of the tiles is tree covered. So even when we get later on in the, into the run, there's going to be a lot of cutting trees. Now granted, it can be one of those things that, you know, I would, I would spend the time, like the beginning half of the end game day, like whatever fields we got pulled and go, okay, like, you know, we're going to go do the fertilizer, we're going to go do this, oh, it's time to go harvest. You know, do all that stuff, do time lapses where time lapses are appropriate. And then when it's done with those processes, like, well, time, time to trees. <laughs> and that can honestly be one of those things that we'd just skip ahead. I'd run up, cut down the first tree, and fade to black, fade back in, and just do the, hey, it looks like we made 30,000, you know, show the before and after of the spot that got cut down. We'll see. It's something I debate doing. I, I looked at also doing a Silver Run, like, Survivor Man challenge, where that one is going to be a bit more extreme in some of the ways, where you'd start with just a chainsaw, because, again, you... Actually, I think Silver Run, they just give you a chainsaw. I don't even think you have to buy it. Um, But you get your chainsaw, and you would need to do literally everything yourself. So not even, not even give you the property, but the idea is you, like, you showed up, you have nothing to your name, but a chainsaw. Mostly because the game just gives it to you, and besides, you're gonna buy it in two seconds, so why bother? Um, and then you can take, like, the missions on the map. Now, part of that, okay, the missions are a little less satisfying to watch, in my opinion, because it's not, like, your own progress. You just go harvest this field, and it becomes, you know, 12,000 bucks in your wallet. They're pretty lucrative, but most of the tiles in Silver Run are very large, so end up costing you, like, a hundred thousand and some change. And then once you buy and you have a chainsaw and a vehicle, you can move the logs, you just, again, have more money than you know what to do with. So I haven't figured out how I want to navigate that. Because I like, I like the runs where you start out slow, and you have to build your way up. So, it's one of those things. Usually with the silver one run ones, I did like this one where I give myself a, um, a starting point just fast forward time because that's just practical for both videos and streaming. That once you finish what you can do in a day, that's productive. Instead of standing around in the dark where you can't see anything, just be like, yeah, we're just advancing to the next day. It'd be different as trying some challenge to be like, hey, let's see, let's see how much money I can make in 10 years on this map or whatever then certainly I would want my character to be working every single minute of every single day. 
course. I managed to split the difference just right that <laughs> both logs are overweight. So let's go ahead and make our final sale of the trees, and we can figure it out from there. After this, we just gotta drop off the stuff from the greenhouse, and that gets our final verdict. So for the trees, I think we're gonna just be at about 66,000 and some change. Um, I'm less sure about the greenhouse. I would guess it's gonna put us into the mid 70,000s, um, at which point we'll have kind of tapped out everything I've got to sell. And that's when we have to make my final decision about what the next step is. Um, so this isn't an unusual way to start these kind of runs. Is to figure out like... You know, how much, how much money you're working with at the beginning before you've tapped out your available resources. Just over 66,000. So the next move is just going to be going to get our stuff from the greenhouse, load it up on the trailer. Might take me two or three trips because it is a small trailer and trying to use the um, forklift attachment. We'll see.
All right, let's go ahead and see if we can't manage to get a bunch of these pallets set up. Um, we've got our, tra our trailer over there. It has been a while since I've had to use this thing. Remember correctly, we have to lower it to the ground, which we've just done. There's not as much room as you have for a lot of the, uh, the forklifts at this one. But one good news is if you line this up right, you can actually check on the supplies in there. Okay, so I'm going to get three more boxes out of it. So you can actually sit here, wait for the box to reappear, put this down, move forward, pick it up, repeat the process. So it's actually not too bad to stack if you're patient enough to wait for it. I think the little difficult is sometimes getting your mind around positioning and everything. Um, I do wonder if I can actually stack these like four high. I don't, I don't think we can. I think what'll happen is if we stack it four high, I'll be able to pick it up. Like that part will be fine. But my fear is what'll end up happening if I do that. Is that we'll have too much weight on the back. And we'll have risks of like tipping. We'll also probably dump it when we go to turn. It'll be just very unstable. Let's go strap that in right now. Okay. You're all strapped in. Okay. I don't know how good this is. I think everything's in now. This top box here is tenuous, but the rest of it all looks solid. So let's go ahead and drop this off. So lower it entirely. Oh, 
the lower entirely. Move it to that position. Drop that. Was today payday? I think today was payday. Today was payday, right? I'm not losing my mind? I do this a lot, by the way. I will second guess myself all the time. Yeah, today's payday. Yeah, we want to go ahead and sell. Um, that's right, because we went and we did the trees and we we're going to sell afterwards. I thought that was the case, just having that moment going, wait, hang on a second. Alright, so how bad is this going to be? So far, feels fine. Doesn't look like anything's loose, though. Not seeing anything wiggle. So get over the road. Um, and start our way up the road to get to the sell point. So, I don't really know which sell point I need to be over for this one. Um, we'll have to figure that out when we get there. There we go. So, note to self, we have like this weird spot next to the co-op. So where the icon is, that's a lie. Don't trust it. It's next to the co-op is where the actual sales happen. Um, so yeah, it looks like just shy of 71000 So that is our final price is going to be here. Alright, so it would appear that our final price here is 70599 um, and that's not counting when we go to do repairs, so we need to make a decision on what we're going to be doing with the money we have here. Now, we got a couple of options. So this is a repair point, so let's go ahead and do this. So, first, that's not the gas spot. Um, repair shop was somewhere around here. Alright, so that wasn't too bad. Alright, so. The decisions we have to make is I can go the route of the vegetables. That'll be exceedingly painful. Like, really extremely exceedingly painful. That's one option. I do have enough that I could get the mower attachment and either a forger wagon or a baler. Not as horrifically painful, but still pretty horrifically painful. I vaguely remember having another idea for an option we can make money. Um, we could go the route of sheep or something of that nature that wouldn't be the worst. It would still require me to have... So we went that route, I'd get the... the. If we went that way, we'd burn $12,000 on a mower. That's fine. We'd burn $26,000 on the smallest sheep pen. So that puts us up to $38,000. Um, we would need probably a baler to be reasonable. So we're going from $38,000 to probably pretty much on the money for what we've got if I'm not mistaken I do think I am going to turn off seasons it's happening I'm making the executive order um, we are going to be turning off seasons and like I said the reason the reason behind this isn't to like cheese things I just don't want to wait so we're going to do that so we're going to go ahead and get that I might turn this off for the compression or whatever yeah, it's fine. 
I know some people be salty about that. But if we're going to go with the veggies, I just want to get done. Um, for those who don't know why I'm being like, oh man, the veggies, and like really dragging on actually starting them, you'll, you'll learn. You'll figure it out. Um, alright, so in the meantime, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to go here. I'm accepting we're in veggie technology. So get ready for a good time. It's veggie time. So here is the 12,500 for buying the veggie planter. And we're going to pay the extra for this. You take the license plate off of it. So this thing is going to be an absolute awful nightmare to deal with. You'll see. You'll understand soon enough. We still have 18,000 left over. Bad. Um, so we're going to drive over here. We're going to grab the cedar. We're going to bring it down. We're going to grab the harvester. We're going to bring it down. We're going to go up. We're going to buy basically all the seeds we can. We're just going to really max out our seed count. And we're just going to plant as much as we can. So, ah, buy new boxes here. So you spend 130. Okay. So you get the idea here. So you'd buy the box. This is the point you'd be sitting there. You'd drive around. You've got that little teeny tiny little spot along the wheel. So we don't, we don't harvest with the whole giant monstrosity behind me. It is just that little itty bitty two rails on the right hand side is my harvester. That's how much harvesting space is. It's like 0.8 meters or something like that. So, understandably, this is a bad time. That's that's honestly the big negative with this, is just the harvesting. Alright, so now with this, I need to buy some seeds. Go ahead and hide this thing again. But yeah, so we're we're gonna have we're gonna have some painful, 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 painful harvesting in our future. Okay, that was cursed. 
All right, so with that, for right now, we're just going to run right over here. And just drop off our forklift end on this side. And you're not even going, but wait, how are you going to get that off on the other end? That's beauty. I don't have to. Not yet, at least. We will later. But for right now, I just need to get all of this back down there to the cedar. And we can worry about trying to deal with harvesting when it comes time to harvest. On, there you go. Hmm, that does not look like it's going over all of those. Let's see how many decide not to go for the ride or not. All right. So again, we don't need to get all the way back to the entrance. Right now, with where we're going to be planting all this, I'm going to just put it on the corner closest to us. That'll be okay enough. And then I can worry about trying to do all the planting later. Like I said, we're not going to be planting late into the night. I'm going to go ahead and just advance the day. And then we'll start getting everything down. And we can go from there. And I don't imagine these will just spill out for me. Of course not. That's fine. But what's going to end up happening here... Let's get you all set. Go run over to our home. Oh man, not even a 50% fertilize. Right, because it's going to be penalized from the lime lack. This is going to be terrible. Well, I have already committed to this run. I've already posted the first video. The other runs I was debating, I didn't post the first video. Alright, so with that, we did get our harvester for the root crop. We get to get our planter for the root crop. Um, we've got a bunch of seeds, so we're all good there. I don't have a means to put down fertilizer right now, so we're just going to live without that, unfortunately. Um, and I am going to have to pick up the crates one by one by one when it comes to the other side for those crop. I don't think people understand just how many crates I'm going to have to pick up, but it is the reality we live in, so we are going to do that. But I do hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I will see you in the next one. So thank you again for tuning in.